Folks, hello and welcome to week four. What I thought I would do uh, for my little uh, intro video for the week is uh, go through uh, my example of how I would complete the week four discussion post as we look at a real nice application of systems of linear equations. Uh, this is a, a typical example or typical application of systems of linear equations where we look at revenue and cost of uh, producing a certain item. And uh, in, in, in doing so, in understanding revenue and cost, uh, the thing that probably is of most value to everybody is profit. And so what I thought I would do, like I said, I'm gonna go through what I would uh, use for my example this week. And uh, hopefully this helps everybody get going on this idea and also uh, if you're having any trouble with Desmos, uh, hopefully this will help you with that as well. So going along, uh, if you had a chance to watch my video, I believe uh, during week uh, during week two, uh, where we bought uh, an expensive item and we looked at the cost of doing so with principal and interest, I had a putting green in my backyard. So of course it makes sense that I would follow up by uh, manufacturing golf balls. And uh, first, uh, the decision variable here that I will uh, that I will declare in the in the problem here is uh, the val or the variable x, which will be some number of dozen of golf balls sold. So when you go buy golf balls, typically you buy them uh, twelve at a time. So that's uh, what I will use here uh, for my unit of sales. Now, kind of kind of working backwards here again. So as I said, uh, we will be able to figure out or we'll understand how this. Uh, profit idea plays into when we uh, compute revenue and cost. So the revenue, uh, obviously, is if, if I'm selling golf balls by the dozen and I sell 36 of them, so $36 times the number of dozen of golf balls that I sell will be the amount of money that I, uh, that I make uh, revenue-wise. Obviously, that's not profit because the cost has to be subtracted off that. But let's talk about cost here. So there, is a, there are two components uh, to cost. This V times X is a variable cost, and uh, I'm saying that's for materials, so when I make the product, I will, uh, the variable cost is uh, the materials, and then there's a fixed cost. In uh, this case, that would typically be uh, my employees that are gonna make the golf balls, and any of the tools that I have already purchased that we would consider to be sort of a sunk cost, regardless of whether we made golf balls or not, if we made that investment, that's still something that we consider. And we'll say that perhaps $5,000 of that can be uh, applied to this uh, scenario here. So then if I go back, so again, working backwards with those two ideas in mind, I have defined uh, my variable cost for materials, $12 a dozen, uh, sales price per dozen, $36, and then the fixed cost, labor and tools uh, is $5,000. So. As you, look at, uh, as you look at these assumptions in these equations, my cost equation will be 12X plus $5,000. Again, the 12 is the uh, variable cost per dozen times the number of dozen that I sell and then plus uh, the fixed cost. And then the revenue, again, pretty simple there, $36 times the number of dozen of golf balls that I sell. And then obviously if we wanna look at profit, profit is equal to the total revenue that you are able to pull in and then minus your cost. So if you simply subtract these two functions, you will get 24X minus $500. So let's go to decimals. Now I'm gonna break away from this and go to decimals. And I'm gonna start by graphing these first two equations, the cost and revenue. And then we'll look at what's called the break-even point and we'll see if we can find some correlation between the break-even point and the profit. So let me now switch over, let's see, to decimals. I think I already have that going here, I do. Uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to, uh, let's see, I'm gonna move this palette out of the way, first of all. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my axes, my X and Y axis. So I've, I've already graphed this so I know generally where I need to be. I don't wanna take your time up. So if I go to the, and this is the wrench that's talked about in the uh, presentation of the discussion post. Uh, what I want to do is I wanna set my X axis to minus 10, and I want it to go up to, let's say 700. And then on the Y axis, I'm gonna use minus 10 here. And then I want that to go to 11,000. 
and you'll hopefully this will make sense here as I go through this. So here's the beauty of decimals. Um, all we need to do really is start graphing these equations. And remember I said, uh, let's see, I'm looking at a piece of paper here. My cost equation, cost equation is 12x plus 500, I'm sorry, 5,000. And the way, uh, let's see, this is, yes, let's see, maybe I have got to, let me just scroll in a little bit better for you here. There we go. That shows a little bit better. So obviously now uh, I have uh, adjusted the axes. And what I did is I just basically uh, rolled my mouse here. And that was uh, what I needed to get me kind of in the ballpark here. Let me make sure that this window is also, that should be better as well. Okay, so I have graphed my cost equation, 12x plus 5,000. What I was looking for here is obviously 5,000 is the y-intercept, and that obviously makes sense here. And the slope is uh, $12. So then, let's see, once I've graphed that, if I just hit enter, now I will graph my... Uh, my revenue function, which is 36x. And let's see, you can see the intersection of these two points here. Let me, uh, let me see, let me make an adjustment on the x-axis. I don't want that to be quite that wide. Let's go back to about uh, 700. And then we'll pull the graph over, and I think we've got a little better uh, depiction now of uh, the scenario here. So. Uh, so what do we see uh, right off the bat? So we've graphed the cost function. Again, that's, uh, I believe this is red line. And then the blue line is the revenue uh, of 36X. So if we, and so I'm just rolling my mouse again because I'm going to kind of zoom in here a little bit on this point of intersection. So it looks like, uh, so if I put my mouse on that point, uh, the question would be, what, what does 208 represent? And that, uh, again, from the reading, is the break-even point. So if you look at the cost uh, equation graphed here, notice that from uh, x equals 0 to x equals 208, the cost uh, is greater than the revenue. And that obviously that makes sense because effectively what I'm doing, obviously I'm... I'm uh, I have this, uh, this variable cost here, 12 bucks per dozen, but I also, I'm trying to suck up some of this $5,000 that I have in overhead, and it's gonna take me a while to get there uh, if I'm only um, getting $36 a dozen for my golf balls. And so at this point where the two lines intersect, what we're saying is here, uh, when X is 208, uh, the revenue and the cost are the same. And so this would be the break-even point. And what you notice from 208, uh, x equals 208 and beyond, you'll notice that you uh, are starting to see the revenue be greater than the cost. And that is a good thing. The last thing I want to do here is let's take a look at the difference in the two functions. Remember, uh, revenue minus cost is profit. And remember, I said that equation, so we'll say... Profit equals uh, 24x uh, minus 5,000. And I'll hit enter there. Uh, just one quick thing here about Desmos. Notice that I, I haven't used, uh, I've used x obviously uh, based on the way I define my decision variable. But notice that the dependent variables in all cases are something different. The way that we have written these equations, Desmos will assume that x is the independent variable and C in this case, R in this case, and then P in this case are the dependent variables. So it looks very much like, uh, you know, a slope intercept form of a linear equation, but the variables work out very nice. And that way you can kind of keep track of them. Uh, in the green here, it's appropriately, it's a green because it is now we're talking about profit. But notice here's the key point that we want to make here. If we look at the break even point, we know that the break even point is about x equals 208. And if we drop that down to the x-axis, we know that the revenue, the revenue here of zero makes sense. Because again, at this point, the uh, revenue and the cost are exactly equal. So at this point, there is no revenue. So that is that should be the idea that we take away 
from graphing uh, revenue cost and profit on the same set of axes. And then, like we said, once we go uh, above equals uh, or above X equals 208, we'll notice that the revenue is greater than the cost and obviously the profit becomes positive. Notice, uh, let me just scroll down here or pull this up just a little bit. Notice that the revenue is less than zero up until you get to about uh, 208 dozen golf balls sold. So uh, again, uh, I, I apologize for the, uh, for the golf application here, uh, but uh, that's, that's just me. And, uh, but I hope uh, obviously that uh, what I, we, we've talked about here, uh, not only generating these equations, but uh, putting them into Desmos and looking at them in Desmos. I hope that's helpful for you to do your own little scenario this week. And uh, we'll, I will look forward to seeing those. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Otherwise, have a great week.